and then the cluster architecture is about federation right so this is one of the most important features in hadoop 2 so let's take a look at that so in Hadoop 1, we said what well, there was just one name node with one namespace, and it was managing all the data nodes. But now once your cluster becomes big, then it is not possible for this name node to scale very well because you will keep on seeing your out of memory issues and data node space becomes to 4, 1000, 2000, your number of files will increase. And as we discussed that every file needs 150 bytes. And if you go to say 20 million, 40 million, 60 million, then your memory requirements will also rise. And at, point, at a point of time, this name node won't be able to handle it. It will just crash with out of memory. So what happens in Hadoop 2 is now we have a concept of federation. That means you'll have multiple name nodes and each of these name nodes are independent. They are not talking to each other and data nodes are at the bottom and you have a block pool. And out of this block pool, you basically divide these blocks into pools and each name node basically works on one pool. So now basically what happens is you can keep on adding the nodes and you can say that out of my data nodes blocks, if you have say, say 2 million blocks, you'll say 500,000 goes to first name node, next 500,000 goes to second name node, third 500,000 goes to third name node, and the last 500,000 goes to fourth name node. So in that case, if say one of the nodes goes down, still the rest of the nodes can basically uh, have that block pool and they can serve it. So the data nodes are going to basically talk to all the name nodes. As you can see that this block pool is available here. So all the data nodes, they talk to all the name nodes, but the name node is going to just maintain, look at a pool and they are not going to talk to each other and discuss anything. So this is how basically you do a concept of federation. Now you have a federated cluster where certain blocks are being taken care of one day one name node, certain other number of blocks is taken by other name node. So this is the concept of federation. So Shama is saying, can we upgrade 1.0 to 2.0 federation? Yes. So when one you do is when you do upgrade upgrade, you will basically upgrade the cluster and then you have to set up. So you can see each of them has a separate namespace. So you have to set up namespace. So if you look at this link that we said, it explains this in detail and how do you configure it it's federation. So you can look at this. So you have to set up namespace for each of them. And then you basically, when you upgrade, you just upgrade the cluster, sorry, namespace wise. So that means you, you will first upgrade this name node with a set of blocks it has, second name node with the sec second set of data nodes. So you can basically now also do a basically upgrade of a chunk of your cluster. And then you can like fully do the Cluster. So all the data nodes will talk to all the name nodes. So basically data nodes are aware of all the namespaces because they have to send the block report. So, so Shama is saying they are not mirrored. So as I said that this name node does not talk to the other name node. So each name node is maintaining its own copy of metadata and those metadata might be mirrored. This might be RAID. Uh, so they might be copying on multiple location, but the second name node won't know about the metadata of first name node because they don't care. They just manage their own set of pool. So Mohammed Singh, the main difference in two is multiple name node concept, multiple name node concept. And, and as, and as we saw in the previous slide, so in the next slide, you will see what are the other differences. So this is the first difference that we looked at federation. So you have a federated cluster and you are instead of one name node. Now you can basically divide your cluster to have multiple name nodes and look at certain number of blocks, which is a pool. So it was just looking at that pool. Okay. So now let's look at the second main feature, which is HA, which is high availability. So how that's implemented is now you have an active name node and you also have a standby name node, right? So that's the difference. You have a standby name node and data nodes, they send their block report to both of them. So standby name node now also has the block report from data node. So it also knows where, what blocks exist on what data nodes. And then you have a shared edit log. So any change that happens, it goes on shared edit logs and the standby name node periodically reads those edit logs and it basically combines it to its namespace. But the writing of the edit logs is only done by the active name node, right? So there's only a single 
writer, which is called the concept of fencing. That only one name node, which is the active name node, will write the edit logs. The standby one will read from it and apply it to its own namespace. So what would happen is if, say, this node goes down, the standby will basically now have all the edit logs. It will have the block report from all the data nodes. So it will now just become primary and then it will start writing and then this one can be made standby so it will now keep on reading the log so there's always a single writers to avoid the contention and not have like multiple entries written to the edit logs so this is how we are basically implementing now a hot standby and secondary name node is still there which does the same thing for the active name node which basically periodically takes the um, fs image merges edits and send it back which basically then are copied by standby name nodes. So standby name node will just be in the read only mode always till the time it does not become primary. And that's the point when it will start writing the edit logs to the name node metadata directory. So that's the uh, name node HA concept. And, and the other things that you see here is like resource manager. So this resource manager has not taken over job tracker. And then instead of task trackers, we have something called node manager now. And on node manager, we'll have application masters, which we'll see that. And then data node layer stays the same. And now data nodes on the left side basically have blocks. And instead of task trackers, now the same nodes will have node managers. So that's the difference. So this tells a complete picture of how HDFS high availability works on this end. And on the right side, it tells what are the new components in the system.